Welcome back to the Python tutorial series. I'm so glad you're here. This is the ninth video in this series, and today we will be talking about the import statement. Then we will learn about ASCII values and how to use ORN and char. Finally, we will go over bitwise operators. The timestamps are in the description below. So let's get started. If you remember from a previous video, we briefly touched on the import statement. So what exactly is the import statement? On the web, there's tons of modules which contain functions. This module math contains functions such as ceiling, which rounds up and floor, which rounds down. There's also different functions within the math module, such as square root, cube root, and so forth. And there's tons of modules on the web. If you're looking for a function, you can just search for it on the web, and it's probably in one of these modules, and you can import it this way. From the module math, import ceiling and floor. Now I'm going to show what ceiling and floor does. Print seal. 3.7 that rounds up to 4 and if I do print floor 3.7 that rounds down to 3 and you get 4 and 3 respectively ceiling and floor aren't built in that's why we import them and one thing to note the import statement needs to be first above what you use it for there are three different ways to write import statements. You can do from the module math, import the specific function, or you can do from math, import star. And when you do import star, it imports every function from the math module. So if you run it, it's going to display the same thing. There's also a third way to do it. You can do import math. This imports the module math, but not the specific functions. So if I were to run this code, it would present an error because it doesn't know ceiling and floor. It's a name error. It's not defined. But there's a way we can solve this doing math.seal from the module math. Since we imported it, get ceiling and from the module math, get floor as well and then when we run this it will work again so that's three ways to use the import statement to import functions from modules throughout this tutorial series we've been writing strings which contain letters and letters are stored in python you might think oh it's just a letter but really it's a number it's based off of ascii so ascii has a number for each letter and each symbol. You don't need to know this specifically for the Python PSEP certification exam, but it's useful to know. So you may be wondering, how do I get a specific number for a letter? If we do print ORD and then the letter A, it will return us a number 65. So A corresponds to 65. And ORD is how we get A. If we do print CHR 65, we will get A. And so when we print this, we get 65 when we do ORD A. And we get A when we do char 65. So what is an uppercase B? Let's find out. We're going to create a variable upper B and set it equal to ORD A plus 1. And then we'll print upper B. And when we run this, we should get 66. How convenient is that? A is 65 and B is 66. One thing to note is that capital letters have a different number than lowercase letters. Since upper B is currently 66, we can also make sure that it's a capital letter B by saying print chr 66 and when we run this we will get a capital b so that's a brief overview of ascii and how to use ord and char with it
Now let's dive into bitwise operators. A bit is one of the foundational principles of computing and computer science. A bit is a zero or a one, one being on or true and zero being off or false. And when you think of a bit, you might think of a byte. A byte is eight bits together and it's commonly written as something like this. And you might notice that it's separated into groups of four. A half a byte is called a nibble. And this byte that is one zero is the equivalent of two. If it was seven zeros then a one, that would be just one. Then we go over, so it's two. This would be three. And this would be four and so forth. So how exactly do you use bitwise operators in Python? If I do three and four, and this and is a bitwise operator, so it will compare the two on a bit level. To see this a bit more clearly before we print it, a three is what's seen on the left here, and a four is here. So it will pair the ones and zeros, and it should output zero because there is not any similarity between the two because a zero and one is zero and a one and zero is zero, etc. They both have to be ones for them to be true. There's also an or in Python for bitwise operators. It is this. And when we run this, we see that it's going to output seven because it's one, 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 which is seven. There's also an exclusive or operator in Python, and it's the caret. So only one of the two of them can be true. So this will once again output seven, but let's say we did three and five, and we printed this, it would output six, because three and five have a common one place, so this cannot be an exclusive or. In Python, you can also use another bitwise operator called not, and it does the opposite or negates it. So the not of 21 should be negative 22, and it switches all the zeros for ones, and the general formula is negative x minus one. For example, if I did print not negative 21, it should print out a positive 20. And there you go, it does. In Python, you can also shift something to the left or to the right. For example, if I wanted to shift 17 to the left by one, I could do that. And then when I run this, it will shift it to the left. So basically double it and you get 34. I could also shift it to the right by one. And you may think it just halves this, but no. Remember, a 17 ends in a 1, so it will remove that one entirely. So it will be half of 16, actually, which is 8. And there you have it. And that's how to use bitwise operators in Python. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow along with this video series by subscribing and hitting the notification bell or by clicking on the next video so that you can expand your knowledge about Python. And as always, I can't wait to see you next time.